Welcome to the Hard Water School. My name is Ed Shaw. I'm the park interpreter for the Carl T. Johnson Hunting and Fishing Center and the statewide coordinator for the Outdoor Skills Academy. Today we are going to cover everything you need to know about ice fishing. How to stay safe, warm, and find more fish out on the ice. We're going to look at what you need to wear to stay comfortable, what's available for rods, reels, types of line or the different varieties of line and why we use what and when. Tip-ups, how to properly set tip-ups for pike, walleye or even perch. And we're going to look at safety, what you need to be out on the ice with first, last or even just to carry in your shanties or in your sled all year long just in case because you never know. We'll cover the electronics, how to use your smart devices to find more fish and be more successful. And we'll go over some rules and regulations that you guys will want to be aware of and making sure that you guys go over this book year after year to make sure that you guys are following all the rules when you're out there fishing. So we'll have a series of segments for you guys to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed them and we'll see you out on the ice soon. The first thing I want to go over is how to properly dress. It's really important that you guys come to the clinic and you dress properly when you're heading ice fishing so that you guys stay comfortable out on the ice. We have a saying in the outdoors, it's buy the best you can afford. Now you guys are going to see a lot of equipment today uh, that is fairly expensive, but not nearly as expensive as being a pro uh, bass fisherman or walleye fisherman. You can get into ice fishing and fish like a pro relatively inexpensive comparative to some of those other open water sports. So I'm going to go over, basically I'm going to start with the base layer and go through it. But if there's one thing that you could purchase, say that you're going to purchase one expensive thing a year, uh, that would be good outdoor clothing. Now keep in mind, I'm going to show you guys all this expensive gear, but it's also stuff that I've collected over a long period of time. I've been nice fishing with my dad since I was probably at least six years old or earlier. So keep that in mind. It's, it's a collection of gear over time that I have upgraded. It's not that I went out and just purchased everything all at once. So I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed when we're going through this stuff and I'm showing you things. But there is one thing that I would highly recommend that you purchase first and that is your outdoor gear. Now, whether it's an ice fishing suit or uh, a good snow pants or shell or an outer, outer layer with thermals, um, that's up to you. I'd highly recommend that you guys look into one of the new float suits. Uh, if you're fishing early ice or late ice, if you happen to go through, it'll keep you buoyant in the water. So let's take a look at some of this gear. Now, first thing I'm going to start with is our feet. Now, if you can able to keep your feet warm and dry, you're going to stay out on the ice a lot longer. Typically, that's the first thing that gets cold are your feet and hands. Uh, these are sock liners. These are going to wick away the moisture away from your feet. Now, uh, I have three or four, maybe even five or six packs of these that I keep around my house that we all wear when we go snowboarding, skiing. So again, these are multi-purpose use things. I wear them hunting and snowmobiling. So these go on first and these are going to draw the moisture away from your feet to keep them dry. These are wool socks that I wear over top of these. These are going to keep my feet nice and toasty. So. This is going to be my base layer and my warm layer for my feet. Now, a good pair of thermals are very important. Uh, there's another saying in the outdoors called, you know, cotton kills. You're going to want a, a good form-fitting layer. Now, keep that in mind. Performance gear is meant to be form-fitting. So you want a thermal layer like these that's going to go against your skin nice and tight and that's going to wick away the sweat and moisture away from your body. So this is going to draw that moisture away from your body and keep you dry. If you can stay dry, you're going to stay warm. Over top of that, I wear this felice layer. Now, this is going to trap air. So this is going to go over top of my thermal layer. This is going to be my uh, felice layer. And this is going to trap that warm air. So this is breathable but it's going to trap warm air, but allow that moisture to get out of my suit and away from my body, right? So I'll put this on right over top of my thermals. Now, generally, uh, I'll wear just my thermals and my ice suit because it's warm enough with a hoodie, 
But if it looks like it's going to be cold, uh, say it's going to be the other day we had a morning where it was negative 2 degrees, you know, I will wear the thermals with this. And even when I'm walking out on the ice, I probably just have a hoodie over top of this and I don't wear my coat. I bring it, but typically that system right there is warm enough. Now, over top of that, I'll have a thin hoodie of some sort. I got a couple of thin hoodies that are light and thin, but again, this, this is all performance gear and it's breathable material. Um, you want to make sure that you have good breathable material Things such as, uh, this is a clam outdoors, but Blackfish makes a lot of good outdoor gear. It's a newer company, a newer brand, but they make excellent outdoor gear that's waterproof, windproof, breathable material. You wanna be able to get that moisture away from your body. So, I wear a thin hoodie over top of my thermal layer, my fleece layer. From there, then I got one of these net gaiters. These net gaiters, uh, I absolutely love these. We wear them skiing and snowboarding and so forth. You'll see me wear mine out on the ice. And I'll demo it for you, but it's got a split in it. And I've never seen one like this before. Um, I absolutely love them. Uh, ice Armor makes them. Clam Outdoors, you can order them online. They're fairly inexpensive, but it comes down just like this so that it goes inside your coat and it traps that warm air inside your coat, a lot like a scarf would. And then this, comes up over your face. Now, if you've spent enough time in the outdoors and worn face masks or even uh, scarves, you know as well as I do, if you can breathe that warm air back into your body, you'll stay that much warmer out on the ice. And the goal is to keep you out there longer. A lot of times, especially bluegills or panfish, they won't bite until the sun hits the top of the trees. Well, I the other day I was out on a small lake and I watched almost all the fishermen leave, but me and one other guy left right at dark. About the time they hit the boat launch, the fish turned on and started biting because it was that time. Well, they left because I noticed they were wearing Carhartts and stuff like that that soak up water and it gets wet and they've been out there a long time and they probably got cold and they were just ready to go. Well, that was the difference. Uh, I ended up catching a nice master angler bluegill that particular night, but I caught it pretty much just about after everyone left. You know, and then this is going to be your outer shell layer and it's going to go on right over top. Windproof, waterproof, and it'll tuck in right here with my net gaiter. So it's a really nice system to have all when you put this all together. Now, this one is particular. I'm going to take it off because it's warm in here and I'm starting to sweat a little bit. But this is a, a float coat by or a float suit. This is called Motion Float Technology by uh, Ice Armor Clam Outdoors. I really like these systems quite a bit. I have one. Uh, this is my jacket. Uh, they make women's clothing sizes and colors. They also have uh, youth sizes. This is my youngest son's jacket. You know, and I don't have to worry about it if they happen to go through the ice or they're running around the ice playing with the ice scoops and the minnows flag goes off and they're running, I don't worry so much about it because I know they have a float coat on. Also, this is reflective, which is nice when we're out on the ski hills or out on the ice and it's getting dark. This really pops with that light out there. So it's a safety thing too. Uh, Vexilar makes one of the most comfortable ice suits that I've ever worn uh, right here, but it, uh, this is a cold snap suit. The downfall is, is this is not considered a float suit. Um, so, but I, I typically have two suits myself. This was the first suit I've ever owned for ice fishing. Uh, the un ice armor was the second one. I bought a float suit. But the nice part is, is when we're doing our classes and you'll see this, uh, at least some of you will when we're fishing two or three days together, is I will wear one suit one day and the next suit the other day. And basically that allows me that evening to take that, my ice armor or my float suit off, hang it up, let that dry and the next day I have a dry suit to um, put on and hit the ice with. So it's that important. I own multiple suits. This year I just got this one for my, um, my oldest son. Uh, he's getting to be a pretty large lad. So uh, Ice Armor makes these uh, float suits in a variety of different colors and sizes. Like I said, they even have women's cut type of suits. 
And we also have the bibs. So they have nice gear loops on them. And we're going to go over your accessories in another film. Another important piece of equipment you're going to want to pick up is a hand towel. Uh, these go right onto your suits. They'll clip on. And this is nice to keep your hands dry. Now again, if you can keep your ha hands and your feet warm, you're doing better than 50% of the people out there. And I always like to have a towel so that I can wipe my hands off, uh, the fish slime, whatever it may be, keep them dry before I put them back in my gloves. Now, something I do with my gloves are I take hand warmers and I'll flip my glove upside down, put them back here, or put them right here where my wrist is, and put my gloves on. Everyone thinks, oh man, you never wear your gloves or your, your hands don't get cold. How do you stay out there that long? Well, my hands do get cold, but is what you don't know is I have a hand warmer here and a hand warmer here, then that will keep my hands nice and toasty when I'm out ice fishing, especially when I'm scooping ice or reaching down in the water and grabbing fish. Now, the other thing I like are these gloves that come all the way up like this. I guess these are like a old snowmobile style glove that come up over the cuffs, especially when I'm riding my snowmobile or I'm out on the ice pulling the sled so I don't get my hands wet and I can pull the drawstring here and trap that heat in there um, when I get my hand warmers and stuff in there, I'm just trying to get my hands warm. Uh, obviously, you can see I wear them a lot. I'm, I've had this pair of gloves for quite a few years now, and I've just about worn them out, and I'm probably ready for a new pair. The other thing, I always have two sets of gloves with me out on the ice, and I always keep one inside my jacket right here. Not in a pocket, but against my body, just like this. And yeah, it makes me look a little fatter, a little poofier, right? But that's okay because you'll notice that when I catch a fish, I take my gloves off and I throw them down on the ice and they might get a little wet. Well, once they get wet and cold, you don't want to put your hands back in them. They just make your hands colder. I'll take out my dry warm pair and I'll put those on and get my hands warm. Especially towards the end of the evening when you're catching fish and you're uh, out there. Get yourself a good hat. This is a knit hat, but it's got a fleece liner in it. They're nice and thick. I really like these hats quite a bit, actually. Um, you can see, you'll find them for sale in retail stores, but most importantly, they have that nice liner. I'm always got some sort of a ball cap on, like my Stormy here or something like that. But the nice part is these will stretch enough to go right over top, just like that, so I can get my ears warm. So typically, you're hole hopping for panfish, like bluegills and perch, uh, crappies, and you know, you're not gonna have time to throw up a shanty. You're gonna go from hole to hole to hole to hole to catch them. It's windy, it's snowing, you might even have a light rain, and you just wanna get your ears warm. Uh, between the net gator and this, uh, and you have good outer layer, that's the nice part about this. these ice suits. They are waterproof. You're not going to get wet in the rain. I've proven that. Even riding my snowmobile across the ice at 40 miles an hour, we, uh, I did not get wet. So. These are quite impressive actually. And if anyone has ever put gear to test, that is me. Um, if it's breakable, I seem to find a way to break things. So with that said, probably one of the most important things that you guys are going to do is your boots. Now, I got two different sets of boots here. Um, these are my boots right here. These are uh, ice fishing boots designed by Clam. These are probably the best pair of outdoor boots I've ever worn. I wear these out in the deer stand. I wear these um, snowmobiling. I wear these out in the backyard sledding with the kids. My feet never get cold. Matter of fact, my son asked me if he can, he wears my boots now, and he asked me for a pair this year. So we'll be getting him a pair very soon. Uh, notice I have my ice spikes on this pair of boots. Now, these ice cleats are designed to keep you from slipping out on the ice, and they will be required for our schools. So. If you don't already have a pair, uh, these are called Catulas. They're uh, ice spikes. These are really good set, uh, but they're they can, they're quite expensive. Or you can just pick yourself up a pair of yak tracks or chains, but you do need to bring a pair to our school. In the past, we've had a little bit of water on the ice. It's been extremely slippery. You guys get to the school and our local bait shops just don't have enough for all of our students. So this is the one thing that I ask that you guys purchase before you come to our classes is a decent set of chains and just like everything i've been mentioning these also have dual purpose uh, i have a dirt driveway so in the springtime when the snow melts it gets a clear sheet of ice over top of it uh, i wear these to go out and salt and shovel and stuff like that so i don't slip and fall or i'll even give them to my parents 
So when they're walking out on the ice or something at home, um, I bought them sets of them so that they don't slip and fall. Now, you don't have to run out and spend a lot of money on a good pair of boots. These are my um, youngest daughter's boots right here. I just bought these the other day. Uh, she needed a new pair of boots and I wanted to get a pair to demo for you guys. But I got these at Blaine's for on sale for 30 bucks. And the most important part of it is, is I've had guys show up in hunting boots. And they say, oh yeah, they're waterproof, they're hunting boots. Well, they're leather boots. They're not gonna keep your feet warm. And I've actually had several different schools, people have left and went and purchased boots and came back. So please go out and purchase something along this line where it's rubber on the bottom and it's gonna keep your feet dry. So uh, not very expensive at all, but the most important thing is, is when you're drilling your holes, water comes up and splashes and this is going to keep your feet from getting wet um, unless you want to wear you know bread bags on your feet like we did back in the day um, that's pretty much everything i have here for warm gear if you guys have any questions about any of this gear you'd like to see it out on the ice in the class i will bring uh, the variety of different ice suits that we have uh, you're going to see everything from uh, the different types of ice suits out there to the float suits and I'll even bring one of the kids suits if they're not out there with us helping out. So again, I will stress if there, you're going to make one big purchase towards ice fishing this year, buy the best gear that you can afford and you'll stay longer out on the ice, which means you're going to practice more. So you're going to become better at fishing and it's going to keep you out there longer so that you're just that much more successful. So those are the one, that is the one tip that I could give you is buy good outdoor gear. Please come prepared to the class. All I'll right, guys, the second session of the class, I'd like to cover accessories that you guys may pick up. These are inexpensive items that I just use out on the ice every day. So when you walk into a bait shop, you go to Cabalas or Bass Pro Shop, you might be a little overwhelmed. Um, Jay's has a great selection of ice fishing gear. So... What are the things you buy that you're going to pretty much almost have to have? Um, and we'll start with the smaller stuff and work our way up. I would get yourself a good pair of sunglasses. It can be bright out there on the ice. And um, with that sun reflecting off the snow, it can be overwhelming and actually uh, damage your eyes. So there is such a thing as snow blindness. I always wear um, sunglasses when I'm outdoors. So bring your sunglasses with you to the class in case you need them. Good pair of hemostats. Now, John Z, we call him the red green of Cadillac, and you'll see him during the tip-up session and out on the ice, he puts surgical tubing over top of his uh, uh, hemostats because that way you're gonna uh, not chip your jigs. You spend three, four dollars on a tungsten jig, and you reach down into the fish's mouth, and you go to take the hook out, and you chip your jigs up. Uh, you don't wanna do that, so to protect the jigs a little bit better, uh, he puts the rubber over top of them, and it'll help out quite a bit. So you guys will see that in, in the classes when we're out on the ice. And so I'm just gonna go through my coat and my bibs and kind of show you what I carry out on the ice with me every fishing trip. Um, I always have two buckets with me and I'll go through those in a minute. But right here in my coat, as you can see, I got my ski pass on there that I, I always have my small jig box. I have a larger jig box that I always keep in my tackle bag, but I got my uh, lead jigs on one side, my tungsten jigs on the other. Now the nice part about these boxes are they keep your jigs from getting chipped up. So you spend all that money again on tungsten jigs and you don't want to chip up your jigs, you want to keep them nice. So these boxes will really help. Um, I've learned I don't need to carry that great big box out there with me. I tend to have my go-to lures whenever I'm out there. So um, like this one for instance, there's one of my go-tos for crappie. I got the Mackie on there, the Mackie Plastics. This one's called a Mackie. Uh, if you ask me, this is just a crappie killer, especially out on Lake Cadillac. I absolutely love that one. Uh, and so forth. So on this side, I've got all my tungsten jigs that I use. And on this side, I've got all of my uh, lures, my uh, artificial lures that I use. I got my uh, glass rattle spoons. I've got my rip and wrap, my time bombs. Those, these are things that I typically target walleyes with, or even bigger crappie or bigger bluegills. 
So uh, that rattle spoon and the uh, that rip and wrap can be just a killer for big crappies, big perch. Uh, so that's what that one's in there for. And the time bomb, that's a great attractant lure. So these are my go-to lures, and this is what I carry with me out on the ice. But I always have my tackle bag in the vehicle just in case I need to run back and grab it. So um, also I always keep an extra set of hand warmers and toe warmers in my coat just in case the kids, students, or myself get cold and I need them. Let's see what else I have here. I have another small tackle box and extra batteries. So the extra batteries are for my GPS or even for my UV light. I use high-vis lines, so this is a UV light that attaches to my VEX. So when it starts getting dark or I'm in my shanty, I can turn on that light and that line will pop. I can see what I'm doing uh, real easily. But uh, this tackle box is just a small tackle box that I keep my hooks and swivels in, sinkers for uh, setting tip-ups or if I need an extra sinker for my lines or something like that. I use XXX swivels. We'll go through all of that in uh, the terminal tackle and tackle part of the class. But I just want to show you these are nice tackle boxes. They're light, they're small, and they're nice to carry. So I'm not carrying a great big tackle box out on the ice. I, I basically take what I think I'm going to use that trip and I keep the bulk of it in the vehicle so that way I'm not carrying it all the way across the ice. Um, in my bibs, uh, inside the pockets here, I keep a little uh, UV light for glowing up my lures. So that's what this is for. And a remote for my retractable um, cord on my Vexilar. And you guys will be able to see that out on the ice, what that does. And in this pocket, I've got my plastic. So uh, again, we'll, we'll talk about plastics or using plastics out on the ice during the, the uh, lure part of the class. But I always have my plastics on me in case I run out of live bait or maybe I want to I didn't buy bait that day or I didn't have time to go buy bait. My open up my bait puck, the bait's dead inside my bait puck. So you'll also want to pick up a bait puck and whether or not you have a small one or a big one, these big ones are great. They're uh, made by HT Enterprises. These can hold a lot of wax worms and a lot of spikes for you. You'll see these out in our, in our class. These will be out on the ice. Um, this is what we're basically going to be dishing out bait when you guys are out there with us. And we put them in these smaller bait pucks so we can keep these in our pocket. So that's going to go in the refrigerator when I fill it full of uh, wax worms or full of spikes. And then I'll basically fill my smaller bait puck out of that. Uh, but for the schools and the classes, these big bait pucks are really nice. So. But you're gonna go in, you're gonna buy bait. It's gonna come in a small plastic cup. Those break in your pocket. You end up with sawdust all over and you end up with maggots and uh, wax worms crawling around in your pocket. Uh, you don't want that. So uh, this is an item along with the hemostats that you're gonna wanna pick up. And if you're gonna buy jigs, I would invest into a, a little tackle box of some sort that you can put all of your ice jigs in there and keep them uh, secure. So. These are things that I would highly recommend that you purchase uh, a, a, bite, a bait puck of some sort and hemostats of some sort. Also, right here, these are a couple of bucks. This is a, just, it helps get your jigs out. These are made by Cold Snap. These are excellent tool, especially when you're fishing for bluegills, perch, uh, crappies. When the hook gets down in their mouth a little bit way, a little bit further down, you can just push that in, you just push the hook out, it pops right out. Uh, super valuable tool when you're out there fishing. I put mine on a retractable lanyard. It just always stays on the gear loop right here on my bibs. Also, a pair of nippers, or this particular pair is uh, their Vexilar, and they even got a hook sharpener on them. So uh, it's not good for your teeth to be biting your line. So I always carry a good uh, pair of uh, nippers with me. and. I always have my fish grabber right here in case we get a big pike or a big walleye and we want to get pictures or I got to reach down and grab him out of the hole. I can't quite get my hand down underneath to scoop him out. A lot of times I can just grab onto the walleye, grab onto the pike and pull him out that way. Um, you'll have kids and students that just don't want to grab onto the fish to take pictures. I'll have these out here with me so you guys can hold on to the fish. It also keeps your hands from getting all slimy and 
stuff like that. So that's pretty much all I keep right here in my bibs and in my jacket. Uh, this is always, I always keep all the stuff right there. It's always, always, always in my coat pocket. I never leave it. And even at the end of the season, when I go to put everything away, I make sure everything's dry. I uh, clean everything up, fold it up, put it in a bin with a bunch of uh, dryer sheets. And the next year when I pull it out, I'm not looking for all of my gear. Um, I mentioned earlier, get you a good pair of ice cleats. So I always carry, these are the ones I wear all the time, but I always have a spare pair in my bag just in case I forget these ones. I always keep them back here in my gear pocket. So these bags, these rod holders are really nice for holding all your gear and keeping everything that you need. With that said, um, again, tackle storage, very important. You invest a lot of money. You can see this is all pretty beat up from being in my shanty last year. Um, you spend a lot of money with your jigs and obviously need to spend some time organizing this one but this will keep your jigs nice and tight and keep the paint from getting chipped up and the rattles from breaking off or uh, depending on what you're purchasing so i'd invest into something like this so uh, tackle storage is pretty important when you're trying to get out there on the ice and fish and organized and again more tackle storage treble hooks um, these are all treble hooks and uh, stinger hooks for tip-ups. So I always run stinger hooks on a lot of variety of rigs that I do. So I always keep my tackle storage all together and right here in my bag. So tackle storage, tackle storage, tackle storage, and staying organized is pretty important. Um, the one thing I would invest in, and again, it's dual purpose. I always find dual purposes for everything. And uh, when you're going to go buy it, these are relatively inexpensive. Expensive. They usually run I'm guessing between 10 and 20 bucks, but um, keep this with you at all times. I have two of them. I keep one on my snowmobile and I keep uh, one in my sled or shanty, whatever I'm pulling out onto the ice. So I always have this. And then in the summertime, I put this on my boat. So that way, if someone goes overboard, someone needs help. If I'm out on the lake and I see someone in the water or another boat needs a tow, I have a good rope out there. I can throw this bag right over to them, they can put this around them, I can pull them out of the ice, I can pull them out of the water. This is a very valuable tool that is quick and easy to use. Uh, HT has one, Clam has one, doesn't, I don't, it doesn't matter which brand you buy, They're all the lifelines are pretty much the same, but it's the difference between you being able to help someone and save their life or not. So every single ice fisherman can have one, should have one of these, and you would be amazed at the amount of people I see out on the ice that don't have one. So this is something that um, I hope you guys take the time to purchase. I saw that Cabela's had them earlier this year, uh, first ice. And uh, if not, uh, try to pick one up next year or order one online. So this is something that I hope you guys take the time to invest in because you could save someone's life with one of these. So you'll see these out on the ice. and. They clip right to my shanty and in my boat I always have it hanging right there where I can easily just grab it and toss it to someone if I need it. So you can save someone's life doing that. Ice picks. Talking about safety. Uh, these come in a variety of styles, a variety of brands. Pick yourself up a good pair of picks just in case you go through. Between these and my float suit I'm fairly confident if I happen to go through I can get myself out. I'm going to float. I'm going to be on the water. Yes, I'm going to go into shock, and there's a lot of videos out there of what to do, but I can roll over, I can get my uh, thoughts together, grab my picks, and I can get myself up onto the ice and get myself to safety. Now, the rope really doesn't do you much good if you're by yourself, but at least if I'm fishing with a partner, which I pretty much always do, I always have someone with me out on the ice, at least my partner can throw me the rope. Um, I always have a long line going to my shed and we'll show you that in the class on how I do that out on the ice. But um, that's just something that is one of those tools that is smart to carry with you and have when you're out there fishing. Um, take a look at some of the other accessories I have that are not necessary. If you purchase a pop-up ice fishing shanty of some sort, uh, this is a nice tool to have. This is going to be able to attach to your drill. I highly recommend that you buy a drill system. Uh, whether 
It's the new HTE drill, super light, really nice and fast, or a K drill, which are chipper blades. They both have their advantages, but um, you can use that same drill off of your auger to put your ice anchors in for your shanty. So if you're gonna go to a pop-up shanty, which will have a dual purpose, whether it's hunting and fishing, but you'll be able to put those right down in the ice with your drill if you get one of these tools. I use it a lot in our schools. I always carry extra leader line in here of sorts. Lots of tackle that I'll probably never use. As I said, as fishermen, we always, ooh, shiny stuff, right? Lots of accessories here. I always carry extra hats, gloves. You never know when you're gonna need them. There's an extra hat, a couple of extra hats, three extra hats, gloves, bait puck, tip up, ice anchors. I always carry at least one anchor in every shanty. I've been out on a lake, for example, Portage, it was so windy. Uh, the guy I was fishing with, uh, he didn't have ice anchors with him, but we were able to, I had a couple of extra ice anchors. I put them down in the ice and hooked the shanties to. Otherwise, our shanties would literally blow away. So there are a lot of times where you need these when you're out and about on the ice. So, you know, ice anchors are nice to have just in general. And I like to keep all my ice cleats and everything right here together. So when it's time to go fishing, all I got to do is I know I can grab my bag, my rod lockers and go. So a uh, couple of other things that you're going to want to have is a good ice scoop. And notice a lot of this stuff, I'll have measurements on it whether it's, uh, I use um, short rifle gun cases for rod lockers. Uh, you can pick them up at Myers for like 10 bucks. They'll fit right in your shanty. Uh, I got this great big rod locker, which holds all of my variety of different types of rods, but uh, the rod that I can pick the rods I wanna fish with out of here, put them in that gun case and just take two or three rods out on the ice with me. So get yourself a good ice scoop. Uh, a way to get water up out of the ice. A friend of mine, uh, Mr. the Red Green of Cadillac, Mr. John Zakrysik, uh, he made these. You can dip this down in the water and I can put water in on my fish to keep them from freezing. And he mentions that in his segment also. So, and then I always have a way to measure fish. This will go up to 42 inches, which in Michigan, about the biggest predator fish you're gonna catch is a muskie and they gotta be 42 inches. So, which is also a master angler muskie, but this will help you whether you want to take pictures for Master Angler or um, you got to measure a pike to see if he's 24 inches or a walleye. So these are nice to have. This is just a blind from this is an old house blind from my old apartment. And I put one of those um, stickers on it, a ruler sticker. <clears throat> and it's nice to have. So I always have a bucket with some tip ups in it and all the gear that you guys see here. And I got my little minnow bucket with me. Uh, I'll have a cooler with minnows in it and then this minnow bucket I use to run my tip-ups with or if I'm walleye fishing I'll keep the cooler outside of my shanty or right next to the shanty and I'll just put minnows in this bucket and I'll just keep a few in there that way I'm not dipping my hand down into a lot of water and also um, if I'm running tip-ups I can just put a couple suckers or shiners in here and I get to carry this little bucket over to the tip-ups versus carrying the whole cooler or a big bucket. So that's really nice to have out on the ice with us when we're fishing. Uh, a couple other things. Um, this was my fish bucket. So I got a lid that I sit on top of. And then on the front here, I got a hole cut out. Well, why the hole? That's so I can slide my fish in here without people seeing me throw them up on the ice. Uh, I don't know about you, but you know, it's a lot of times you spend all the time finding the fish, putting the work into it. Some stranger walks over, sees all the fish out on the ice, and they'll drill a hole right next to you. Well, don't be that guy, right, or that gal. So don't be that person in the future. Be ethical. Give that person space because they found, you know, they took the time to find the fish. Or maybe they just landed right on them. Who knows? But um, if you don't want that to happen to you, one of the easy things you can do is just make sure you're not setting the hook above your head. You're just giving it a short hint, which is usually just enough, especially with smaller jigs and panfish. And... Um, don't throw them on the ice, throw them in your bucket. That'll do two things also. The fish won't freeze. Um, nothing's worse than getting home from ice fishing and you need to clean your fish and they're still frozen. So if you put water in your bucket and just keep water in your bucket, um, that'll keep them from freezing. Also, by putting them in the bucket and in the water, you don't have fish all over the ice and people won't come over and fish right next to you. 
So it, 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 if you ice fish enough, it's going to happen anyway, but that's just a little trick that I do. Um, and people walk up to you, oh, did you catch anything? No, not really. You know, but you got a bucket full of fish and they don't, they're none the wiser. So uh, this, these are the two buckets that I carry. So you're going to want to have at least two buckets with you uh, when you go ice fishing. Uh, at least one to carry your rods, your tip-ups. You know, you can throw a couple rods in here or a tip-up um, or that sled or anything you know, like you don't that. Have to. I would do that. Another important tool and safety item that you're going to want to get is a spud. Uh, I always carry a spud out with me, especially first and last ice. And uh, this is the tool I use to check the ice. I've got an auger to drill holes, so I really don't use it anymore to chip out holes or to um, spud a hole. But I'll use this, I'll take two stops, and I'll hit the ice nice and hard with it. And then I might hit it twice. If it goes through after two, the ice is not safe. But if I can hit it hard twice with this uh, spud, then I know the ice is safe enough to go out on. Uh, we can demo that when we're out on the ice. If, if you ask, uh, I'll do it. If not, there's a lot of safety videos out there that you guys can Google and watch. But um, that's pretty much how we do it. We take two steps, we hit it twice. If it doesn't go through, you're probably pretty good. Um, uh, there's no such thing as safe ice. So if anybody tells you otherwise, don't they don't know what they're talking about, you always got to do your own due diligence and make sure that the ice is safe. But we take all the safety precautions we can from everything from the float suits to the throw ropes, um, ice picks, and having a spud. Uh, generally, if you use these methods, you stick to them and you take your time, you'll never have a problem. Ice fishing is a pretty safe sport. So with that said, um, these are all the, the lower end or cheaper accessories, the nice things that I use every day out on the ice that you may want to pick up prior to the class. You don't have to, but it's something that I get questions on a lot. You know, what do I need to pick up prior to the class? And a lot of students will say, well, I wish I would have known that prior to the class. Well, by doing these video segments, you guys have the benefit of doing so. So I hope you take the time to swing into Jay's or your local bait shops. Uh, on your way up here or way down or even uh, Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop and take the time to pick up a few items that you're going to use out on the ice. And I also find if you make a commitment to get out ice fishing more and you have the gear, you took the time and made the purchase, you will get out and use that stuff. So uh, I'm going to set up for the next segment. Hopefully if you guys have any questions, uh, you wrote them down and we'll answer all your questions uh, during the live uh, segment prior to the class out on the ice. And you're gonna see a lot of this stuff out on the ice and we're gonna reinforce what we've been telling you in these videos. So, write down your questions and I hope to see you soon.